Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to take what we've been talking about with these two-dimensional vectors and we're going to define a new operation on these vectors and that operation is called the dot product. So let's take a look. If u has the component form a1, b1 and v has the component form a2, b2 then their dot product which we denote by u dot v so it's kind of that multiplication dot that we use uh, in basic algebra but when we see this dot with two vectors it's very important we're not multiplying the vectors we're using the dot product and we define the dot product in this way two vectors u dot v is going to equal the product of the horizontal components plus the product of the vertical components so here u dot v equals a1 times a2 plus b1 times b2 now it's very important to note that this is just a real number isn't it a1 times a2 is a real number b1 times b2 is a real number, I'm just adding those numbers together and we get this real number as a result. We do not get a vector. Uh, two vectors dotted together gives a real number. Now let's see some of the properties associated with this. Dot product. Oh. Let's let u, v, and w all be vectors. And we'll let c be a real number or a real scalar then we have these four properties for the dot product. We have that the dot product is commutative. u dot v is equal to v dot u. We also have that when we multiply by a scalar, that scalar commutes and uh, associates in any way that we want it to. So we could have c times u, this gives us a vector, and then we can dot that result with v, or that's equal to multiplying the scalar times the dot product, u and v, or that's the same as dotting the vector u with the vector cv. So this scalar can be multiplied through in any way. Uh, we can kind of move it around, uh, bring it out to the front, whatever's the most convenient for the problem. We also have this distributive property. If we have the sum of two vectors dotted with another vector, we can distribute the dot product. So u plus v dot w is the same as u dot w plus v dot w. And if this w was in front, we'd have the same thing. We'd have w dot u plus w dot v. No problem there. Now these first three, you can go ahead and confirm with yourself if you just plug in some um, general vectors, call u a1 b1 b a2 b2 and w a3 b3. Plugging in on both sides, you're going to get exactly the same thing for all three of these. But we'll go ahead and prove this bottom one. Uh, u dot u is equal to the magnitude of u squared. And this one's quite useful. So let's go ahead and take a look at why that is. If I look at u dot u, and let's just say my vector u has the component form ab. So this is ab dot ab. So then by our definition of the dot product, this is going to be a times a plus b times b or a squared plus b squared. Now I'm going to write this in a different way. I'm going to write this as the square root of a squared plus b squared all squared. All right, so I'm introducing this power of 2 and this square root. These cancel out and we get back to a squared plus b squared. But the reason I'm doing this is because we know that the square root of a squared plus b squared is exactly the magnitude of u. So what I have here is the magnitude of u inside these parentheses, and it's squared. So this is property 4. And we're going to use this one later. Actually, we'll use it in just a moment here to prove our next theorem. We have this result with the dot product. And after we talk about this theorem, we'll do some examples. So this theorem is called the dot product theorem. If theta is the angle between the two non-zero vectors u and v, then u dot v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine theta. Now let me go ahead and draw this out. With vectors, when we talk about the angle between the vectors, we usually mean the acute angle between the vectors. So let's say I have some vector here, v, some other vector, u. So here's my v. This is my u. And remember from our vector arithmetic, this vector going from the terminal point of v to the terminal point of u 
this is the vector u minus v. And if you don't remember that, this was our, uh, I think, our second video on vectors. We talked about vector arithmetic. So we have this u minus v, and this angle between the vectors is called theta. Now, whenever we're looking for an angle between the vectors, this is a little bit of an aside, we usually talk about the acute angle, but it doesn't actually matter. We know that cosine of theta is the same as cosine of 2 pi minus theta, so if I choose this to be my theta or I choose this to be my theta, cosine of either of these thetas is going to be the same thing. So this result holds no matter which vector or no matter which angle we talk about, but we're usually talking about that acute angle between the vectors when we line up their initial points together or when we have we give them a common initial point. Okay? So let's see the proof of this theorem. And actually the way we prove this theorem is by using the law of cosines. Okay, we see we have a triangle. I know what all the sides are and I know this angle. So let's go ahead and take a look at this law of cosines. Now, well sorry, I don't know the angle. I want to um, find a formula in terms of the angle. So this is an SSS triangle. So we can use the law of cosines to solve for this angle in terms of the other sides. So I'm going to need to set up my law of cosines with the side opposite of theta being on the left. So I have that the magnitude of u minus v, that's the length of that side opposite theta, squared, is equal to the magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus 2 magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta. All right, we're just using our law of cosines, but I have all these magnitudes of the vectors because we know those magnitudes are the lengths of those sides of this triangle that we have on the right. Now, taking a look at the left side of this equation, the magnitude of u minus v squared, remember from that property 4 we just proved, this is equal to u minus v dotted with u minus v. Right, this is our property for that u dot u is equal to the magnitude of u squared, only here instead of u, my vector is this difference, u minus v. So then we also have our distributive property from the last page, property 3. I can distribute this dot product over the parentheses, and what I get is u dot u minus and I have v dot u here, and I have another negative v dot u here. So this is minus 2. We'll say u dot v. And then I have minus v dot minus v plus. And we'll just write it as minus v dot minus v now, for now. Of course, minus v dot minus v is the same thing as v dot v. Um, when we multiply the horizontal components and vertical components, those double negatives all cancel out with each other, don't they? Now, again, by property 4, this u dot u is just the magnitude of u squared. I have minus 2u dot v plus, and this is going to be the magnitude of v squared. And again, you might be saying, well, no, it's the magnitude of negative v squared, but the magnitude of negative v and the magnitude of v are the same. It's just the length of that vector v. That negative just denotes a direction. So once we're talking about the length of the vector, direction doesn't matter. The length is the same no matter which direction we're pointing. Okay, so this is just my left-hand side. So I have on my left-hand side this whole thing, magnitude of u squared minus 2u dot v plus magnitude of v squared is equal to this right-hand side from my original equation, magnitude of u squared plus magnitude of v squared minus 2 magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta. Now this magnitude of u squared cancels because I have one on both sides. Magnitude of v squared, I have one on both sides, so that cancels as well. I have minus 2u dot v 
is equal to minus two magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta and just dividing both sides by negative two we get our dot product theorem u dot v is equal to magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta All right there it is that's our result we have above so we can use this theorem in any way that we want to but a particular a particularly useful way to use this theorem and let me write this as a note here as an immediate result from this if I divide both sides by magnitude of u and magnitude of v I get that cosine of theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Now this is what we'll use most of the time when we use the dot product theorem. Uh, the reason being is we'll often be given um, u and v and we're asked to find the angle between u and v. The way that we find that angle between u and v is we plug in u and v and their magnitudes on this right hand side and then we know what cosine of theta is. Again, we can choose any theta that works for the equation because as we saw before, let me bring it back up, as we saw before, if I use this acute angle or I use this angle on the outside, cosine of both of those thetas is the same. This theta on the inside is the theta of the outside um, subtracted from 2 pi, and we know that cosine is equal to 2 pi minus theta, sorry, cosine theta is equal to 2 pi minus theta just from the periodicity and the even properties of cosine. So let's take a look at some examples. And I guess before we go on, one comment. Um, as I said here, this bottom equation is very useful when we know what the component forms of u and v are, but we need to find the angle. This top version of the theorem is very useful if we know the magnitudes of the vectors and we know theta, but we don't know u and v in component form and we want to find the dot product. Okay, so we have a couple different uses here, but we're going to use that bottom equation for these examples here. So find a u dot v and b the angle between u and v for these different sets of vectors u and v. So let's look at this first one. If u is 2, 0 and v is 1, 1, so part a, I have that u dot v. Now this is equal to 2 times 1 plus, and now the product of my vertical components, 0 times 1, which is simply 2. So that's it. That's our dot product. Now for part b, I need a little bit more information. I need the magnitudes of u and v, so we can use our dot product theorem to find cosine theta. Now the magnitude of u is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 0 squared. This is just our square root of 2 squared, which is simply 2. My magnitude of v is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. So this is the square root of 2. And so that we have that cosine of theta from our dot product theorem. This is u dot v over the magnitude of u, magnitude of v. My u dot v we found to be 2. My magnitude of u is 2. My magnitude of v is the square root of 2. And so we get that this is 1 over root 2, or we're used to seeing this as root 2 over 2. Now, as convention, as I said, we like to choose that acute angle. So I need the acute angle theta, or that angle in uh, quadrant 1, in other words, where th cosine of theta is the square root of 2 over 2. And we know that cosine of theta is the square root of 2 over 2 when theta is equal to pi over 4. So pi over 4 is our angle between these two vectors, u and v. So here's our answer to part a is 2. Our answer to part b is pi over 4. Now let's try this other one down here, where we have, uh, we're in a little bit different of a component form. We're using i's and j's. So for part a, I need to find the dot product u dot v. Now writing it in this form, I'm still going to take the product of the horizontal components plus the product of the vertical components. 
My horizontal component for u is 0. I don't have any i's. So I have 0 times negative 1 plus the product of the vertical components. From u we have minus 5 and from v we have minus square root of 3. So my dot product u dot v is simply going to be 5 square root of 3. Now for part b again we need to find the magnitudes of u and v. So the magnitude of u is equal to the square root of 0 squared plus negative 5 squared. So this is simply the square root of negative 5 squared. And remember the square root of negative 5 squared is not negative 5. They don't cancel like that. This is defined to be the absolute value of negative 5 or 5. The magnitude of v this is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1, my horizontal component, squared, plus negative root 3, my vertical component, squared. So I have the square root of 1 plus 3, which is square root of 4, or 2. Okay, so we have our magnitudes. Now I know that cosine theta is equal to the dot product of u and v, which is 5 root 3 over the product of the magnitudes. So that's 5 is the magnitude of u, 2 is the magnitude of v. We get a cancellation in the 5's and we're looking at root 3 over 2. And we know that cosine of theta equals root 3 over 2 in quadrant 1 when theta equals pi over 6. Now I say quadrant 1 here because I have positives here. I had a positive root 3 over 2 and a positive root 2 over 2. So that's why I'm looking at quadrant 1, but it's of course likely that these angles could also be in quadrant 2. Right? I could have two vectors um, that have this obtuse angle that looks something like this. And so this angle here, if I put these vectors in standard position with this vector on the right here along the x-axis, this angle theta would put me with this terminal side or this second vector sitting in the second quadrant. So I'd actually have a theta uh, in the second quadrant and when I solved this u dot v over magnitude of u magnitude of v I would have gotten a negative answer instead of a positive answer. That's how we'd know that the theta we're looking for is in quadrant 2. Alright I know this video is a little long um, but we're ready to use the dot product in new ways in the next video. We'll see you there.